Tas from the Bosphorus. If you're looking for contemporary Turkish furniture and design accessories, look no further than the hipper neighborhoods of Istanbul. Gaya Çevikel, her name has become a byword for trendy Turkish design and not just in her own country. She recently designed a collection for the Museum of Modern Art in New York. This red dot over here is the symbol of MoMA and this has been given as a gift only to the trustees. And without the red dot, this is exclusive to MoMA, we sell only to MoMA, it's in their uh, MoMA design stores. So you can find it there at the moment. Among the products sold on her label Gaia and Gino are these crystal goblets. Each glass represents a different European country. That's Spanish, Sofia. And this one is, for instance, this one is Russian, Ivan. And all, they all have names like that. That's why, you know, this is, we think that this is the extension of Istanbul today and Turkey today because we have people from all over the world. The more fashionable of Istanbul's 14 million residents tend to collect in the districts of Nishantashi and Galata. This is where Western and Eastern influences are juxtaposed in an inspirational clash of cultures. Gaia and Gino makes China with a difference. Chevikel has reproduced the city's striking skyline in porcelain. She recently scooped first prize at the world's largest consumer goods fair, Ambienta. These are the mosques, all together the cityscape, this one. And the idea is actually our uh, sharing rituals and culture. Because in Turkey, we put everything in the middle of the table, like mezes, and we share the food. Gaia Çevikel is on a personal mission to make Turkish design a household name, but she needs help from other forward-looking local designers. Her furniture is modern, but anchored firmly in the Turkish tradition. A rocking chair, for example, belongs in every Turkish home. And Gaia Çevikel has no intention of changing that, but she has set her sights on revamping the design. This is a completely uh, inspiration from all Turkish rocking chairs. We grow up, we grew up with that. Of course, this is a modern version, modern interpretation. And I like it and it's very comfortable. Gaia and Gino's new collection. The boss is discussing fruit bowls with her company designers. We want to express many feelings and also uh, some messages through design. This is, I will say, through Gaia and Gino products, fusing Turkish traditions with contemporary design. Arabic lettering as a vase. Gaia Çevikel's design makes no secret of its origins. She literally gives Turkish culture a new shape, and in Istanbul, she's never short of inspiration. Size does matter. Some things about this aircraft are supposed to be small. The operating costs, the noise it makes, the pollution it produces. Everything else is big, very big. The Airbus A380 will give passengers a new sense of space high above the clouds. Its designers have planned restaurants, quiet areas, boutiques and bars. The sky's the limit as far as airline extras are concerned to make flying more fun and more comfortable. Michel Lau is in charge of planning the Super Jumbo's interior. As Airbus chief designer in Hamburg, he's been working for eight years to meet the needs and requirements of the airlines that have placed orders for the world's biggest passenger jet. I was thrilled several years ago when I was asked to take charge of this task, and I'm still thrilled. In Hamburg, Airbus recently unveiled a full-size mock-up of the plane's interior. The different travel classes will be accommodated on two floors, with a wide staircase connecting business class and coach. But Lau declines to provide details about how individual airlines wish to configure their plane's interiors. Airline managers don't want too much to be made public before they're ready. This is Right now, it's still difficult to talk about individual details because that's all confidential. So we'll have to wait a few more years and then we'll see what these aircraft actually have to offer. 
bars from social At the areas. moment, we're working on a range of bars, social areas, sofas, showers, beds, changing rooms and more. A relaxing nap instead of swollen feet? Airlines can choose how much comfort they wish to offer their passengers. Misha Lau says incoming orders show a definite trend towards more space for economy class passengers as well as business and first class flyers. New extras are also in demand. Here, for example, you see a bar installation which can be custom built for each airline and will then be available to certain classes. Here, for instance, is a second example of a self-service dispenser for drinks where coach passengers can get up and get themselves a drink or a snack in flight. That gives them more space and more opportunities to move around for greater comfort during long-haul flights. Hamburg is Airbus's second largest production facility after Toulouse. Parts of the fuselage are made here and finished aircraft are returned to Hamburg for their final paint job and interior furnishings. 3D simulations enable customers to take a virtual tour of a flying luxury hotel equipped according to their special wishes. Every product for a customer always starts with an idea phase, which may be initiated either by us as Airbus design or by a designer brought in by the airline. If we're talking about a library, for instance, the customer expresses a need for a certain functionality, and then we have to execute that in a way that fits into the image that the customer is trying to create. At a very early phase, we can use digital imagery to visualize what we have to show that we all have the same goal in mind. Michael Lau loves to rave about the interior of the A380. Just after its successful maiden flight, the giant bird is well on its way to entering scheduled service sometime next year equipped with interiors that give travelers new levels of comfort. Petra Blaise from the Netherlands is the queen of fabric. Whether she's working with minimalistic flowers or huge eyelets, she makes material matter. The wall pieces and curtains created in her Amsterdam studio sell all over the world. You can move it, you can exchange it, you can pull it out and push it in. And so it's like a personality that appears and disappears in kind of a static uh, thing that architecture usually is. The Embassy of the Netherlands in Berlin opened just last year. Its cool, clean shapes made it an instant design classic created by world-famous architect Rem Kohlhaas, who is also Peter Blaise's husband. One of its most striking features are its vast lush green curtains. Petra Blaise says she wanted to bring the outdoors inside. That's one of the key principles of her company, Inside Outside. Ten designers and landscape architects work with her in Amsterdam, developing design ideas for private villas, theaters, museums, gardens and parks. Delft Prison was one of her most recent projects. She wanted it to feel relaxed, a place that could give its inmates something to look at. As usual, she concentrated on round, natural shapes. So that's what we drew and blew up and made the design with this not traditional Dutch flower, but very normal flower that you can find anywhere along the road or in a farmhouse or in a garden where they grow vegetables and herbs. And, um, treated it as if it's a very beautiful rose. Petra Blaise and Rem Kohlhaas like their garden to look wild and overgrown. It's their favorite place steeped in a sense of otherworldly enchantment. Foliage is one of the designer's main inspirations. She translates photographs into fabric, taking her cue from nature with all its extraordinary shapes and colors. In Seattle, we designed the garden which are uh, carpets of grasses and plants. And then inside this garden literally is translated into carpets that are inlaid in the floor. So, so you really continue your worlds from 
inside and outside into each other. Seattle's public library was one of her biggest jobs so far. She laid colorful carpets on every floor. Expensive and one-of-a-kind depictions of flowers and plants punctuated by real greenery. The leftover cuttings now brighten up the Amsterdam studio. We really played with how far we could go, that it's still recognizable as a plant, and at the same time makes you feel like really small, like you're in there. One of Petra Blaze's new challenges is to design reflective parasols for an art exhibition in Rome that do more than just provide protection from the sun. A personal space uh, in the form of a parasol that you carry around and that um, that encloses you in some way, uh, but that reflects the garden and the sky and the trees, but also the space where you walk on back. The world, as seen by Petra Blaise, is full of unexpected twists and turns. These new shapes are clean and minimal. The young German designers have rediscovered the 1960s and come up with angular and colorful results. Berlin-based designer Werner Eislinger is the star of this year's Design Mai. His work is highly sought after. Design Mai is a design festival. The Design Mai is a design festival that differs from other design events in Europe because it focuses on the cultural aspects of design. A lot of other events are attached to trade fairs and have commercial origins. Here at the Design Mai in Berlin, we try to show design as a cultural forum. Uh, yeah, design as, as culture form to zeigen. An old factory in the former East Berlin is hosting just one of Design Mai's 100 exhibitions presenting design in all its facets. The Jung und Deutsch, or Young and German Festival, is a huge draw with the public. The designers are so keen to honor the 60s, they've even come up with a CD deck that looks like a record player from Carnaby Street. 27-year-old Lulu is well known for her illustrations in magazines like Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. She was recently named one of the top designers in the U.S. She's created animations for the festival. I wondered how I could bring together the German and Japanese elements because I know the exhibition is going to Tokyo. So I tried to use these clearly defined robot forms, those transformers you see in Japanese comics, as a metaphor, and then include German cliches, for example, a closet for French fries, or this pair of antlers and the German shepherds. You just saw cutlery flying away. Those are the typical German things I wanted to implement. The lamps and seating arrangements made in Germany will soon be on show in Japan in an exchange program with five young Japanese designers. They've come to Berlin to visit Design Mai and they're thrilled with the exhibition. Design is there to solve problems. It can often be something small, something insignificant. Design is best when it manages to make people happy. Then you have achieved your aim and found the solution. Werner Eislinger in the midst of his works. Werner identifies current trends. Vitra, a top European office furniture manufacturer, recently hired him for a new series. Design is an applied art. It's not a handicraft. It's located somewhere between art and serial production, the applied side of art. The task is to be experimental and create new visions for the world that don't remain one-of-a-kind creations, but which can be produced in series and thus made accessible to a large number of people. The young designers from other participating countries, like Italy, also experiment with new forms and materials. Design My founder, Britt Angelis, invited them to Berlin. This year's exhibition is subtitled, Bright New Worlds. The theme was fairly obvious, to examine utopian thoughts and look to the future. 
Here the designer plays a central role in this context. He designs products for the future. That's why design poses a very important question. What will our future look like? What contributions can the designer make? Perhaps something colorful and bold, if what we've seen at Design My is anything to go by. It is easy being green these days. It's the color of grass, and it symbolizes nature in general. And now it's becoming a fashionable color as well. Green is the order of the day among celebrities, from former Spice Girl Victoria Beckham, to designer Sarah Kern, to former World Cup swim champion Franziska van Almsik. They all wear it. Green is a color that's a bit shocking initially. You think, my God, when can I wear green? But today's fashions are running towards bold colors, colors that shine and are life-affirming. Green is the color of life. It also symbolizes hope and youthfulness. Munich's trendy fashion boutique Pool is placing its bets on young designer labels and bright colors. Light-hearted, playful and fresh, that's how today's green fashions are being described. Those who want to go the whole hog can choose from a range of cheerful green accessories. Actually, anyone can wear green. People are wrong to think that green makes you look pale. The opposite is true. Bright green brings out the subtle nuances of color in a woman's face. It softens the complexion and makes her look fresh fresh like the color itself. I can only recommend that women wear green sweaters or a green scarf. But green isn't just for wearing, you can also sit on it. The Stuttgart designer furniture store Unternehmen Form says green is the color of the season. This is a dish drying rack. It's a nice shade of green. Kitchen should be full of bright colors. A color can never go completely out of fashion, but bright shades may be passe by the fall. At least that's what Christoph Heberle thinks. He's a professor for packaging design in Stuttgart who does consulting for companies such as Adidas and BMW. In the psychology of colors, green is considered to have something steadfast. It's also associated with maternity. That's in line with our primeval experience of green as a color of growth, protection and security. Green also stands for health, which is why it often occurs in foods or even beverages. For example, in this freshly squeezed apple and wheatgrass juice. It's full of vitamins, says the owner of the Grasshopper Juice Bar in Berlin. A new trend we've noticed is that people are gravitating towards it. People are saying we want fruit and vegetables and green things and grass and herbs. Green symbolizes lust for life, whether it's on the wall, in a glass or on your skin. That's why it's now easy to be green. This is Morano, the island of glass blowers in the Venetian lagoon. Venine is one of the leading manufacturers of quality Italian glass. The company works with renowned designers, including Cenzi and Ranucci. By teaming up with artists, the company has been able to create legendary objects of timeless beauty, with a price tag to match. The styles vary considerably, from elegant to playful, depending on the artist. Some of the classics are still in production today. Among the Venini creations that I like best are the bottles by Tapio Rovercola. The vases were developed in the 1970s, and I admire their grace, their special craftsmanship, the harmony of the two parts coming together. 
The colors are very delicate and quite innovative. You could say this is quintessential Vanini. The purity of form, the workmanship, the finish. Everything done by hand. Transparency, clarity and geometry all come together in this vase. The art of quality glass manufacture is a centuries-old and carefully guarded secret in Murano. Today, a museum houses a unique collection. Glass remains the number one attraction for visitors to the island. There's no shortage of places to buy a souvenir to take home, with one glass shop after another. All over the world, Murano means uh, uh, something, means uh, style in glass, uh, techniques in glass. But Venini is a part uh, of this, uh, but uh, always a little bit different from a very Muranese style. Venini dates back to the year 1921, when lawyer Paolo Venini decided to change course and dedicate his life to Murano glass. Venini wanted to make the craft more innovative. Over the years, some of Italy's best designers and glassblowers have worked for the company. This has remained the secret of Vanini's success to this day. Their collaboration has resulted in unusual shapes that have made Vanini famous the world over. The company's creations have been commissioned by royal families and featured in films. There are Venini pieces, uh, for example, in uh, Fellini film Casanova, or uh, in James Bond film, or even in the Almodovar uh, films. Uh, there are often uh, lamps or objects uh, made in Venini. Venini is a firm believer in working with artists who keep an innovative edge. The designer duo Cenzi Ranucci created several vases for the company. We have the freedom to try things out and experiment. There aren't any strict rules we have to follow. We have the opportunity to experiment, search out new things and even make mistakes. So that in the end we come up with something new. Vanini is considered one of Italy's top designer brands and few others in the Venetian Lagoon set the same high artistic standards. Venini and the other glass blowers carry on a tradition that's made Murano famous all over the world. Functionality and elegance are the trademarks of Barbara Schmidt's porcelain designs. Each collection has earned the ambitious designer new accolades. The Elixir series won the Red Dot Award for 2005. I think you're happiest about the first one, but it's always a thrill to win a prize. It's great and really important to be recognized by a jury of experts, but it's even more important that customers like to have your things around, the people for whom they were intended. Barbara Schmidt's tableware has long found its way into the homes of Europe's trendsetters. Her collections are sold at the designer store Stilwerk in Berlin. The design hotel Q, one of the German capital's top addresses, uses Kala China in its restaurant and individually designed rooms. In her atelier at the Kala factory, Barbara Schmidt sketches out ideas for new creations. Then she creates a plaster model. Only then is a prototype created from porcelain. It can be very fragile, very thin. It's actually translucent. Yet it's also something very sensuous, because it's thick. 
and you can feel its weight. I love porcelain dishes much more than those made of stoneware. The factory is at the foot of a mountain in Kalle, the town in Thüringen, which gave the porcelain its name. Thanks to Barbara Schmidt, Kalle has become one of Europe's most innovative tableware producers. Barbara Schmidt has certainly been one of the keys to the company's success. The 38-year-old designs have helped rejuvenate the Eastern German company, which was founded in 1844. Kalle porcelain is still largely handmade. Just a few tasks are performed by robots. Barbara Schmidt finds her best ideas come to her when she's on the move. Travel is very important. It's really important to look beyond your own horizons and see how other people live. Sometimes their lifestyle is completely different, even though they're just across the border. It's really astounding how many cultural differences have been retained in Europe in terms of the types and times of meals and with the kind of dishes used. Berlin celebrity chef Markus Zemmler serves up his culinary delights on Schmidt's latest creation, the Cumulus series. For prestigious events, he only uses porcelain from Kala. It's of the highest quality and it's also quite robust. It's hotel china, restaurant china. Correspondingly, the cream of wild garlic with asparagus on top is fresh and young, just like Kala. Whether for professionals or hobby cooks, Barbara Schmidt's dishes jazz up any meal. <laughs> I think porcelain will keep me busy for a long time to come. Barbara Schmidt still has plenty of ideas left. And that's good for a designer whose motto is, never repeat yourself.